Welcome to Den of Tools. Hi, ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the old Den of Tools. And I wish I was here with good news, but you know that there's no way to put a shine on this one. SK Tools, if you all don't know, the, I'm a big fan bear of SK, have been for years. Well, re, press announcement came out yesterday. They've been sold to China. Kid you not. There's no way to put a, a good spin on this. Uh, they announced that they were uh, acquired by Great Star Industrial uh, Company Limited out of Hangzhou, China. Uh, they bought out, an outright purchase of SK Tools. Now, now uh, of course, SK has been around. This is their 100-year anniversary. What a birthday present that is. 100 years they get bought by a Chinese corporation that was established in 1993. <sighs> There's just... You know, I'm always trying to be upbeat. I always try to find the silver lining, stuff like that. SK has been struggling for years and years, decades even. Uh, and we're going to talk more about that. As to Great Star, we've talked about them quite a bit on the channel in, in roundabout ways. Uh, they're one of the large, now one of the largest hand tool companies in the world. Not usually making premier hand tools, but they do have some brands that are pretty good. Uh, we're going to go through this. So if you don't know, Great Star, they're based in Hangzhou, China. Uh, they're, they've got offices here in Huntersville, North Carolina. Uh, they've, they're in England. Of course, uh, as I said, Hangzhou, not that we can get a picture there for some odd reason. Uh, there's the, from their company page, that's a picture of their, allegedly of their corporate headquarters. Um, Anyway, as far as who they are, well, they own a lot of brands that you've probably heard of. In fact, recently they revived, resuscitated, if we will, ShopVac, which was an American-owned and run company. I, I'm hesitant to say American-made because a lot of their products were made overseas. They did have manufacturing in the U.S., but that was about a third of their product line. Uh, and it looks like that's the way it's going to be going going forward. They're, they're, going, they're reviving that plant. They're going to keep making stuff in the U.S., but a lot of it's still going to be made overseas. Then next we talk about Arrow Fasteners. Now, Arrow is another big old school American name there. Uh, we got staple nail guns, rivet guns, glue guns, grommets, and such. It says the pros know Arrow, but I don't know if the pros know Arrow is owned by Great Star. Another one, woodworkers, they love this one. Pony Jorgensen clamps and, and all sorts. We got bar clamps, specialty clamps, hands clamps, spring clamps, all sorts of stuff. They've been around for a long time, and they are also owned by Great Star. Goldblatt, a tile, a tile and masonry. Well, they, I think they're better known for masonry back in the day. I could be wrong, but tile as well. Uh, that's what they're specializing in now. Again, hand tools here because that's what Great Star does best. And then WorkPro. WorkPro we've talked about a lot. Inexpensive tools. Kind of, uh, you know, real entry-level kind of stuff. They have some great stuff. As I said, you know, I always love their their uh, utility knives. That one's okay. I like the little small one. But good basic, you know, beginner-level tools, stuff like that. And they're expanding their time. They just came out with air tools. I mean, who knew? Air tools. Everbright, they make flashlights. Durabright, they make uh, lamps and stuff like a lot of uh, marine stuff. Uh, LED, whatnot. Let me see if I can get you a picture here. Like you see the lamp up here up on top, so you can lighting solutions and such, stuff like that. Uh, Miller Falls is a that's a brand that they own. That is a classic, old school American company that made some great. They made the Miller uh, Falls drill. In fact, I have one somewhere around the house. Um, and but they they have the brand. They're not really doing anything with it. Now, that said, uh, also Pace Setter. I think it's a, a Canadian company. Really hard to find information on this, but they own that brand as well. Now, SK is based, they say, outside Chicago. It's in, I believe it's, uh, uh, what is it? Is it Sycamore or something like that? Illinois. Anyway, it's, maybe I'm getting that wrong. It's a decent-sized, well, building, let's put it that way. So they're just down the street from Ideal Industries uh, Corporation. In fact, I think if you pan down here, right, Right over there. I think that's ideal right over there. Uh, so they've got their own facility right here. As I said, 128,000 square feet. It's a big building. Not that many employees, believe it or not. Uh, they're, I think they're listed as officially 60 employees. I'm guessing a lot of the people who do all the basic kind of stuff, like warehouse stuff, are actually employees of ideal. No word on how it's going to affect those employees. 
we, I do know we did cover one of the SK steals and deals recently, uh, and a lot of people were complaining that they had not gotten their uh, their the tools they had ordered, and that they'd not heard from SK. And I think we can now understand why. Uh, many of us did get the packages that we ordered. I got I ordered four ratchets. I got all four of them uh, in in a timely manner, as a matter of fact. But I also got notifications from several people who had said that they got didn't get them that they just got them. So I think that there was a hiccup while they were transitioning. I think those orders are probably going to get fulfilled now. We'll have to see how that goes. But where does that leave the the American tool landscape? Well, you know, SK was, you know, one of the big competitors in, and it's hard to put them in a tool truck. They were they ran independent tool trucks. They also sold a lot online and through some distributors. But of course, you know, Snap-on is the big player in the industry. And yes, they are an American company. They're an American corporation. They're a large corporation that's owned by stockholders all over. And who knows why and how they do stuff or who actually owns most of that stock. At the end of the day, though, you know, you know how the bear feels about them. Many, if not most of the products they actually sell are not made in the U.S., uh, yes, their hand tools are, but they also have a long history of really abusing uh, their dealers and stuff. Not my favorite company out there. Mac Tools. I wish I could get behind Mac Tools. They own a lot of great tools, Proto, stuff like that. Unfortunately, this is Stanley Black & Decker, and we know that everything Stanley Black & Decker touches turns to rust. Um, it, I think it's only a matter of time. Uh, Matco. Matco used to be a great brand out there. Uh, these days, I mean, they make great toolboxes. I'm I'm jealous of their toolboxes. They got some beautiful toolboxes uh, out there. But that said, most of their hand tools, uh, I think they still make some of them, but most of them are OEM from somebody else, and so they're not really as much into the uh, the tool manufacturing as they used to be. Which leaves us with Cornwell. Now, Cornwell of the you know the big five tool truck companies. Cornwell is still, they're still an American made company. They're still, I mean, they're made in, was it Mogador, Ohio? I don't even know how to pronounce that. That's over near Akron. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a you know, a, a, a suburb of Akron, which is itself really a suburb of Cleveland. Anyway, they're a privately owned company. Uh, they make their tools in the U.S. They make their toolboxes in the U.S., you see them around every so often, not really, you know, because they're privately owned, we don't really get to see their financials and stuff. Hopefully they're doing well. You know, let's keep our claws crossed on that one. And then again, the other only option there, which isn't really a tool truck company, is Wright. And, uh, you know, Wright tools and the Wright grip wrenches and all this stuff. Huge fans uh, uh, of them We are here at the channel we are. And uh, it... Anyway, I don't know. That's just another option to keep. We're always. I'm looking for that silver lining. There's still hope at the end of this, uh, this tool, you know, American tool tunnel that we're going down, because as you can tell, the bear's not in the best mood today. <laughs> it trying to find a way to be upbeat about this and think like, hey, maybe this is going to infuse more money into SK, and we're going to see them, you know, come up and be a better tool company, and maybe we will. Maybe we will. Maybe it'll just be a Chinese company that's pumping money into the American economy and producing tools in the U.S. and providing more American jobs. Maybe it's going to happen. And maybe leprechauns are going to fly out anyway. That's all the bear has for you today. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. I'm sure you're all pleased as punch about this news. I don't know. I'm going to be cherishing my last four Honest to goodness, SK made in the USA wrenches. I'll have to put them in a in a safe or something and keep them hand them down to the grandkids one day and show them about. Hey, believe it or not, there was a day when tools were actually made in America. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. Don't forget to chop the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff. You all take care. God bless, and as always, shine on.